another softball question. Can you talk briefly about the problem of unifying all subfields of AI and hypothetical ways to solve it? Wow. It's good to have demanding students. Keeps one on one's toes, just like having a demanding professor keeps the students on their toes. All right, how are we going to unify all the subfields of AI? Well, uh, so there are two answers to this, because there's two parts to AI. There's knowledge representation and inference. I'm more of an inference guy. Like, I, I work on planning, which is a form of inference, where you try and figure out what the world might be like in the future and figure out which action to take to get you to a world where you're happier. Um, uh, so there are lots of different areas of AI. One of the very interesting gaps is between uh, assignment three, where you implemented a strips planner, right? And it's like, oh, we can plan anything. Of course, our program doesn't actually do anything, but we can output these names of very abstract sounding actions, and it all sounds good. Um, and the stuff Scott's going to talk about today, which is like how to get an actual robot to actually move. Like, you know, there are motors and things, and it's in continuous space, and it's not all like, you know, go from here to there. Like, you actually have to tell your motors what to do, and you have to deal with sensory data coming in, and like, whoa, it's the real world. So how are we going to connect task-level planning with actual on-the-ground motions, motion planning? How do we bridge that gap? Um, it's an incredibly cool research problem, and it's one that Scott has even done work on. Um, so that's one way of trying to pull together some of the disciplines in AI, to try and pull together the low level with the high level. Um, but there are others who say, well, you know, there's this aspect of intelligence that has to do with knowing stuff and being able to learn new things and combine it with stuff you already know, and how do we represent what we know? How do I represent the fact that often if I eat Pop-Tarts, I feel sick uh, two hours later? Um, how do you represent that? And so folks like that might say, well, OK, one good way of, of unifying the sub areas of AI is to invent a very flexible language like probabilistic first order logic, where we can make general statements about things and not have to deal with the qualification problem. We can say, like, for all x, where x equals Pop-Tarts, and for all y, where y is a person, ingest yx implies that at time t, where t is now plus two hours, the person feels sick. And that's not always true. Like, maybe that's true with probability 0.8. And that's, uh, if we can all agree on a common interlingua, let different parts of the, of the agent talk to each other, using some common Esperanto, um, then that's a way that we could start to have these subfields of AI work together. Um, so different folks have different points of view on what the most important way of unifying the field is. My personal opinion uh, is that the problem of like making an intelligent agent is it's a pretty ill-defined problem. So. There are a lot of systems now that are trying to solve big chunks of the task, like, hey, drive around Los Angeles without you know, going, you know, going to where you need to go and not hitting anyone. And that requires integrating a lot of different fields of AI. And there are other people that build a system. There's a, some folks are building a system to take, <sighs> I think they already did the chemistry AP. I think they're now doing, working on the biology AP test system takes the, the AP test. Um, you know, like natural language questions come in, natural language answers go out, reasoning takes place in between. They, like it reads the textbook um, and learns stuff and then takes the test. Um, so there are people working on that. It's very textual. It has nothing to do with acting in the world, but incredibly sophisticated knowledge representation and reasoning. People are working on that kind of thing. Um, so the field is moving towards larger and larger and more ambitious systems. And cutting off the right problem is really half the battle at this point. If we could define a formal definition of what it means to live the day, live, live the day in the life of a human, you know, what are the problems that need to be solved by such a system, then we would have 
some idea of how we might go about solving it. And I think a lot of the techniques we've seen in this semester would come into play. At least I hope so.